everyone. This is Jamie Holmes from the Southeast Campus Library at TCC. This second video is going to go into a specific reference database and I'm going to show you the features and tools built in that can help make your research project a little bit easier at the beginning. Remember under our find column we'll click on articles and databases and this is an alphabetical list of the 124 different databases and e-resources that we have available by subscription. In order to get to the reference databases, the quickest way is to use the type filter here in the center of the screen. When I click on that pull down menu, I can see a couple of different types of resources that we have sorted our databases into groups and we're going to click on reference. There are 22 of these and the majority of them come from a company called Gale. They call their reference databases Gale in Context and then uh, they name them based on what they'll cover. So for example we have a world history and a US history in context. We've got science We've got opposing viewpoints and global issues, which these cover the same topics somewhat, but the global issues in context is going to show a more global perspective, and it's also going to cover things that are perhaps issues worldwide, but maybe not so United States centric. Whereas the opposing viewpoints is going to cover things a little bit more from a United States perspective. Finally, we've got biography in context and college in context. College is going to be multidisciplinary in that, sort of like the other two databases I showed you in the previous video, Academic One File and Academic Search Premier, it, it'll cover a wide range of topics rather than just a specific discipline. For my demonstration, I'm going to use science in context because I do have a genuine research curiosity that is personal to me. I'm interested in sleep and lack of sleep and its effects on the brain. So I'm going to go ahead and click into Science, Gale, and Context. And if I'm not already signed into my TCC, of course you know you'll have to do that to access the content. Once I'm signed in, I can see the landing page. And what I want to make sure you understand is all of the Gale in Context databases will look just like this in terms of their setup and their features and the tools that are available. So if you take a look in the upper left hand corner there's a link back to the library homepage which is a nice shortcut when you um, are ready to be done in here and, and you're going back to search a different database maybe. Over toward the right hand side you can easily switch back and forth between Gale databases. You can switch the language you're seeing the content in. You can sign in right off the bat to your Google account or your Microsoft account so that saving articles is seamless. You can save to the, your Google Drive or to your Microsoft OneDrive. There's a search box at the top and there's a link into the advanced search. We'll talk about those momentarily. All of the in-context databases are going to allow you to browse, first of all, some main topics of interest. There will be three of them. And then if you scroll down just a little bit more, there is a browsing option that is a list of subtopics organized under more general disciplines. So if I'm interested in chemistry, I might take a look at and browse the 178 different topics covered in that set. If I'm interested in STEM, I might go into math, engineering, and technology. I'm thinking sleep will probably be covered under health and medicine, but in the interest of time, I'm going to just scroll back up to the top and I'm going to use my search box. And I'm going to type the word sleep. And as I do, I see some suggestions pop up, but sleep itself is a bold term, which is good news. That means that there is an overview, a topic overview here on the topic of sleep. My advice to you when you're allowed to choose your own topic is don't set your sights on one particular topic too early. At this point I might read this paragraph about sleep and 
Now I do have a specific question that I want to ask and, and answer hopefully in this research. If you don't, this browsing technique really is flexible. So read through the first paragraph. If it's incredibly boring, then you might back out and try a different topic. But I'm going to forge forward because I am interested specifically in how lack of sleep impacts the brain. So I'm going to click the read more button to open up the full entry or the full article on sleep. Notice at the top we see some information where it came from, how long it is, the reading level, the date it was published. Of course this is, is something worthwhile to pay attention to. You don't want to research a old information on a topic. And what I love about these articles is that they are going to separate out different aspects of a topic. So you can see here as I scroll slowly there's content and then there's a heading and then there's some subheadings all the way down. This is really useful for not only getting your head around the basics of a topic but also seeing the ways in which it could be divided. So you're not going to be able to cover everything there is on your topic because you're only writing a seven to eight page paper and to do it well you're, you're not going to have room to, to cover it the way it should be covered in total. So you'll want to find an angle and these articles can help you do that. Most of the time these entries are going to give you um, vocabulary, sometimes they'll give you graphs and charts, anything they feel is necessary to help you form an understanding of a topic. Oftentimes they will provide books and other resources, other articles as further reference so that you could go out and find more. And at the bottom of every article in every one of our databases there will be a citation that you can copy and paste and then of course check to make sure the format is correct before you turn it in for a grade. I'm going to go back up to the top and direct your attention to the right hand side where you can see there are some branches out to related topics that I might explore and there will usually be a more like this so you can go out and find different articles. If I go back to my topic overview of sleep, I want to make sure you know that there are, in these, in context databases anyway, there will be links out to different types of sources. So after you've read that overview, you decide you want to learn more. It does provide a start for you in your periodical literature. There are magazine articles, newspaper articles, and journal articles that you can branch out to. In addition, there are videos often. There will be audio clips. These are incredibly useful. These will often be author uh, interviews with authors maybe who have written a book on your topic or um, are experts, have established themselves as experts in some other way and those can be useful as well. All of these are going to have a search within button or, or box. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm actually gonna type brain because I'm not interested in everything there is to know about sleep. I'm specifically looking for information that talks about sleep and how it impacts the brain. So when I do this, it's going to kick out everything that does not talk specifically about the brain in that it, it now this is an algorithm of course and it's looking for the word brain in all of the content that was originally listed. So you can see I've reduced my choices significantly. M fewer journal articles, fewer newspaper articles, fewer magazine articles. If I wanted to I could go into the magazine list and use another really great feature called the topic finder. When I click that it's going to take the top so many results, I think they call it just a top uh, subset of our top results, and it's looking at the first 100 words and organizing the articles into a visual representation. So the research I've done so far talks about sleep deprivation and how it impacts the brain, so I'm going to go ahead and click on that sleep deprivation tile and I can see that there are 14 articles from magazines specifically that deal with sleep deprivation more than any other aspect of sleep. It further tiles or divides out to brain function, insomnia, age, brain research, um, a new study on sleep loss, so I might take a look there, and
and check out those two articles specifically on a study that was done on sleep loss. And my sense is this really would put me um, on the track to where I want to be finding my information. When I have taken a look at these articles, I'll go ahead and open that so you can see, um, I can read the article, oh, this is a very brief article, probably noting a study though. So I could, if I wanted to, um, find Nature Communications, which would be the journal um, that reported the study done by Stephanie Greer at the University of California, Berkeley. And I can see that this was done on August 6th. Of course, this is a 2013 article, so um, I would have to go back and um, I could capture that journal title and I could go back to my library homepage, click on articles and databases again, and use my journal title finder to see if we have access to Nature Communications. And it looks like we do have access to that. Um, we've got from 2017 to the present in a uh, open access journal list. We have coverage from 2010 to the present, which would include the 2013 edition in um, open access content collection. So I could find this article, the full study, just from finding that brief article using my topic finder in Gale. Once I have done what I want to do with this content, I can go back to my topic finder and I can use the reset button to get back to my full set of tiles and I can continue to research in that way. These databases are great places to get started as I said. As you're reading through these articles, pay attention to keywords, maybe jot down a list of key terms you might use. Those terms then can be useful in other databases as you find more material. I can't emphasize enough how important it is that you do search other databases the content that you'll find from a Gale database like this is going to be um, somewhat limited in scope because the content they provide is full text and it will be um, from particular publications and publishers that they have relationships with. If you do not branch out and search another database, say like Academic Search Premier, you potentially could be missing out on a wealth of content simply because they, they are not provided in the Gale set. I will do another video that will show Academic Search Premier and some strategies and tips for maximizing your research in that database as well. Click on the next video link to learn more.